Welcome to all attendees in a new lecture presented by Boston University for Oil and Gas SB student chapter. The title of the lecture is Intelligent Drilling Operation in Real Time, presented to you by Dr. Paulo Samuel. Welcome, Dr. Samuel. We are very pleased with your presence uh, with us uh, tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate uh, it. Yeah. I'm Dr. I will be a moderator here with you. Um, thanks for coming. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me to give this lecture. Uh, I hope you broke the fast and it is evening time. Uh, but I would like to take you through a few points which I wanted to tell. Uh, before that, I wanted to give a brief introduction about me. Uh, what do I do? Where I come from? Uh, just wanted to give some introduction. I don't want to give a, a reading of my bio or profile, but I wanted to give you in the form of numbers. Because I deal with numbers, that's what I do. So I wanted to take you through uh, my bio uh, through numbers. Life is always complex, is it not? Life is always complex, but we live a real life. Especially this during pandemic, uh, we, we are pummeled with a lot of difficulties, but we live a real life. So when I give a lecture, people always try to find out what age is this guy be? So, if you ask the age, you will tell 42, 52, 22, but I think you cannot tell like that because life is complex. At the same time, it is real. So the first one you saw is my age. It is a complex number, but it is uh, it comprises of I, imaginary number, uh, E and the pi, transcendental numbers, which never ends. But if you solve this equation, you get my age. You get a real number, that is my age. <clears throat> Second is the year in which I came to this industry. I don't want to give the whole year. I want only hiding the last digit of the year. Because if I give the year in which I came to this industry, probably you will decipher my age, which I don't want you to do that, you will err on the side of nine years. So this is uh, my educational background. I am a mechanical engineer. I have a BS and MS in mechanical engineering. Then I switched to MS and PhD in petroleum engineering. I am from University of Tulsa. So the next one is the year of my experience. I started my work in the field as a field drilling engineer. I graduated, I went to the field, started working. I was teaching 14 days on, 14 days off, 21 days on, 21 days off, 28 days on, off in the plains as well as in offshore, remote jungles of Himalayan foothills. So when you have this uh, 20 and 21 days on and off, you have three things. One is you have a lot of time. When you come home, you have 28 days off. What to do, right? And also you have a lot of money. When you, you come back 21 days, you have 21 days salary, almost uh, double the salary it looks. When you have time and money, what do you have? Third is you have a lot of friends. I had a lot of friends, a lot of time, a lot of money. So I started enjoying, then eventually I got married. I had a boy, baby boy. When I come home after 21 days, I, I was seeing, he was growing very fast, right? Because I am missing 21 days. Now it reached a point that he did not bother to look at me because I was, he was thinking probably just like a vagabond coming and going, right? But it reached a height that even my dog did not bother to look at me. And I thought maybe that's a time that I need to stop going to the field. With all this wealth of experience, 
from the field, I decided to go to the research. Last 26 years, I'm in the research. I'm drilling engineering uh, researcher. I do mainly downhole tools, optimization, and other related work on well engineering. Then I thought, I have field experience, I have research experience, I need to give back to the industry. With a lot of new engineers coming into the field that I wanted to disseminate my uh, knowledge, then I started teaching. Last 16 years, I'm an adjunct professor at the University of Houston, teaching drilling classes, and also last five years teaching at the University of Southern California, LA. So with all this, experience bracketed within these years, I have a wealth of experience traveling between field, research, and academia. Then I have, uh, this is number of publications. I have published more than 210 technical papers. I hold 66 US patents and around another 40 worldwide patents. And also, I have written 14 drilling engineering books. So that is the one. I don't want to brag about it, but this, I am the first one to publish more than 10 drilling engineering books. And the recent book which I am planning to release is the future, how the future is going to shape. Driller on a drillerless drilling rig. That is going to evolve. And I would like to take you through the rest of the time, how it is getting evolved. This is a panoramic backdrop about myself that you will see how the industry is shaping, how the industry has shaped in the past. And I would like to give a brief background. You will see these books on the internet and uh, uh, try to get hold of uh, some of the books in your library. But I would like to set the stage with a simple equation, because we are all engineers, right? At least we need to have some equation in my presentation. Always I think about it. But how does it relate to the technology that is changing? You will see a simple equation, exponential growth is equal to exponential technology to the power exponential thinking. Now, what is this exponential growth, exponential thinking? So if you take a 30 linear steps, probably you are out of the room in which you are now uh, visualizing it or watching it. If you take on the contrary, 30 linear uh, exponential steps, you'll be, going around the world 24 times. That's the power of exponential growth. Now, if you go back to this simple equation, we take into account of some of the extreme boundary conditions. Zeros, ones, and singularity. Singularity is the time that is the physics will break down. The growth will be unrestricted. Now, if you take this simple equation, you may have exponential technology, and if you don't have the exponential thinking, what happens? If you have zero exponential thinking, you will end up in having one, flat, constant. Now, if you take exponential thinking is uh, you are remaining flat, you have the simulation of exponential technology, what happens? You'll be just growing along with the technology. That is, you'll be like a follower or going with the flow. Always I say the dead fish goes with the flow. But on the contrary, if we have the exponential thinking with the exponential technology, you will have the leapfrogging technological growth, that we see the, the power, 24x power. Now, what does it relate to our industry? What is this exponential technology? Why are we are seeing in our horizontal industries, autonomous cars, aerospace, medical industry? 
what is what is the uh, uh, relationship with our industry always go with a simple uh, time versus knowledge how how we progress in the knowledge we started uh, uh, drilling vertical wells and the bifurcation happened then what uh, we started to uh, drilling vertical wells then we have directional wells and we started punching now we have reached a point that we are now punching horizontal wells we are drilling 20000 in 6 days so it is a clear bifurcation point that is going to the next phase which we call the cyber physical drilling system now we are having all these exponential technologies that is going to handhold this new phase of drilling that will take you to the next level of exponential surprise factor which i call if you don't assimilate the technology with the exponential thinking will remain for remain flat and fall flat there won't be any growth only getting the technology and trying to get it now you will see when does the bifurcation happen the simple question is when does the bifurcation happen the bifurcation happens when the industry goes into contraction mode now this lines also you can see the educational growth right the educational growth is always lagging behind the industry because they will try to get the technology and try to adjust the exponent they try to adjust Uh, educational research now going back to the bifurcation point the bifurcation point happens in the any industry when the industry goes into contraction mode when the industry is in contracting going towards on the downside innovation happens we can clearly see the first one happened during 1984 bust after that we started introducing lot of downhole tools that to change the landscape of our industry moving towards extended reach high lateral wells high reservoir contacts all these wells started now we are going through the protracted downturn after 9 after 2013 still we are going through this so the innovation is pushing and also we are getting the exponential technologies from the horizontal industry that is important now let me take you through two examples how the other industries are using this exponential technology where we can see on the aerospace they are trying to remove the control towers through remote operations real time operations where we have all technologies available so that why we need the brick and mortar control tower where we can take all the things in a remote location line of sight you need to have it because we have to control all the things it is a, a proposition that is going to be expensive a lot of companies raytheon or have already started investing towards this end what does it relate to that now the second one is how the medical industry is doing now you can see robotic surgery keyhole surgeries remote operations remote tele doctors all these things are now hand holding the advancements in this space i iot's edge devices lost mile connectivity we want everything the landscape is changing the workforce demography is changing we want everything on the go anywhere any time right that's what is happening now if you take the medical industry you check the health now this pandemic has pushed it forward right why are we get everything on the wrist of our hands what is driving this you can see here you can see here lot of things are causing this problem sensors advanced sensors smarter algorithms faster processing speed 
of the smarter algorithm, faster, faster processing speed, improved visualization. So let me. So all, all these things are uh, causing this in addition to medical science and engineering, right? So that is important. Now, can we do the same thing on the World Health Monitoring in real time? We don't want to have it on the wrists. We want to have it, everything on the palm of our hands because we have advanced engineering we have advanced technologies and we are introducing a lot of sensors. Can we assimilate high processing power visualized system so that we can use AR and VR so that we can have it on the palm of our hands, not on the wrist of the hands. Can we do the health check and listen to the well, what is the health of the well? What is driving it? The same thing. The sensors, faster processing, calculations, visualization, algorithms. But we need advanced well engineering too, because we can take a lot of data, but we deal with a lot of uncertainties that we need to solve it. So we cannot violate the physics. So we need to have fundamentals that is embedded in these calculations. Now, when you take the real-time engineering, real-time monitoring, now it has become a knob. Now, instead of uh, just monitoring and uh, single world, now we can monitor multiple worlds in real time and compare and contrast the performance. So the real-time monitoring in the past, you can see a lot of uh, uh, windows that the uh, monitors, you monitor it and try to find out what is the problem and tell it. Now it has moved from the field to the office. Office, now this pandemic created additional uh, opportunities that you work remotely and use all these technologies. Now we are moving towards that end of monitoring multiple wells on a single pane. From there, we are moving towards the palm of our hands. It is similar to a remote surgery, doing a surgical operation, and also monitor the flight landing and takeoff from a remote tower. Now, you can see how the industry is transforming. Wanted to get all the data from the surface, then move, the download data to the surface and take it to the cloud. You can see the cloud technology where we can process it much faster and do data analytics there, then send the information to the office, to the palm of your hands, then send it back what action to be taken. So the program becomes evergreen and alive and it is bi-directional at a much faster rate. Also, if you take Halliburton, we have put an appliance very close to the rig where we can process all the data on the rig itself instead of sending to the cloud. Now, you will see in this slide how it has been connected. All the operations are getting connected and the calculations and the decision-making process have become faster. So you can see the artificial intelligence is also being introduced in real time so that it can be monitored. What are the dysfunctions? What are the problems happening? So that the proper decision can be taken at a much faster rate. So now we can see the real-time operating centers have moved with multiple screens into a single pane window, so where we can see through them all the operations that are happening. And almost an invasive analysis of doing a health check 
remotely going on to the next slide what you will see now the artificial intelligence has taken at the top you will see uh, ucoc unified command operating center where all the operations can be monitored and also controlled so you can see how the control is moving from appliance to appliance or from the rig to the office and office to the palm of your hands the same way that we are advancing like uh, in aerospace and medical industry you can see autonomous cars auto industry is also advancing much faster than it this the main reason is the exponential technology with the power of exponential thinking we need to do the same thing otherwise you remember the knowledge versus time we will fall flat now we introduced uh, the well construction 4.0 in alignment with the industrial revolution 4.0 which i will take you at the last slide it is an integrated shared platform where the well plan is kept live evergreen and you can monitor the rig performance surface equipment operations this is not only just a diagnostic analysis like doctors doing but it also takes take take you to the next level of prescriptive analysis where it will prescribe what to do it so that you can prevent the failures or the problems or the pack of the stuck pipes the kick loss all these things so that we can prevent or mitigate what is this well construction 4.0 it is an integrated system that connects from surface to downwall to the surface and also different equipments in a digital format please listen to the video that where you can see the connection between different operators plan design execute the well construction process has never been this simple service companies struggle to communicate the well plan can be out of date at the rig logistical challenges can result in non-productive time today our industry ushers in a new era of simplicity of communication of optimization this is the era of well construction 4.0 building on the current industry 4.0 trend of automation and data exchange in manufacturing technologies well construction 4.0 merges cyber physical systems, IoT, cloud computing and artificial intelligence. With this innovation, we're enabling faster and more certain well plans and designs, providing predictable risk mitigation and drilling efficiency and maximizing reservoir contact through repeatable drilling. With well construction 4.0 solutions, every stage of the process is connected and optimized in real time. During field planning, geoscientists, well planners and drilling and reservoir engineers collaborate with integrated economic analysis to plan targets, pad locations and well trajectories for optimal well placement for your entire field. For well design, well construction 4.0 solutions bring everyone together and provide a complete picture from engineering data and supply chain information to financials and business operations. to service companies and suppliers and the design can be revised at any time to deliver superior economic value in execution comprehensive data from multiple sources and companies including smart equipment intelligent drill bits and more is consolidated at the edge analyzed and optimized collaborate with integrated economic analysis to plan targets, pad locations and well trajectories for optimal well placement for your entire field. For well design, well construction 4.0 solutions bring everyone together and provide a complete picture from engineering data and supply chain information to financials and business operations to service companies and suppliers. 
and the design can be revised at any time to deliver superior economic value. In execution, comprehensive data from multiple sources and companies, including smart equipment, intelligent drill bits, and more, is consolidated at the edge, analyzed, and optimized in real time, and sent to the rig control system to adjust downhole settings throughout the field. And because they're designed to be collaborative, Well Construction 4.0 solutions let individuals in the field get help from experts off-site who can analyze the information and push updated plans to each and every rig in the field. The result is a living well plan that's always up to date, a reduction in your well program cycle of up to 80%, and optimized drilling through predictive analytics that allows you to anticipate outcomes to effectively adapt to the unexpected and to react more predictably and reliably to avoid stuck pipe, control pressure, and minimize intervention. We're helping you understand the past, manage the present, and predict the future of your drilling operations. And not just for the current well, but for all the wells in your field and beyond. This is a new era of simplicity, of communication, of optimization, of Well Construction 4.0. Smart collaboration, superior results. So you can see how the well has become life. It is a living well that we need to check the health of the well through different mechanisms using the technologies available. You can see now it has become very much powerful to visualize at a much faster rate in real time. What is happening? Stuck pipe, pack off, all the problem, well control issues. So I'll take you through some of the powerful visualization where we can see and analyze it at a much faster rate, which was not possible 20 years back. So you can see how the system is being transformed using the power of exponential technologies that we can see it in real time. So you can see all the things happening. Right? The, the, if you know the broomstick chart or the friction factor is the one way to analyze, find out the health of the well. It is similar to doctor checking your pulse non-invasive analysis, the same thing we do that, comparing the friction factor. And we use the friction factor as a proxy to find out what are, the, is there any problem down hole? Why it is the trend is deviating? Then analyze it. Then where it comes into play, the artificial intelligence. So you can see here how this is transforming and also you can replay what has happened and find out what was the problem? What are the other if scenarios? If I would have taken a different approach, I may have avoided this problem. These are the options that digital transformation is helping us to achieve. Now, <clears throat> going back to the remote control tower in aerospace, we can do in the cyber physical drilling system, that it takes to the next level of monitoring multiple rigs on the palm of our hands. That will take a different approach. It is not a futuristic, it is not a pipe dream. It is happening now. It is happening now. Why? There are two reasons, right? The simple equation, exponential growth is equal to exponential technology to the power of exponential thinking. Exponential technologies are hand-holding us. The, at the same time, the downturn or the bifurcation point is pushing for innovation. Now, if you see, that's why we see the artificial in, uh, intelligence coming into play. I call AEI, artificial engineering intelligence. 
we are not automating a supply chain in a walmart or a grocery store or not we are not just automating a vending machine in a mall ours is a complex oscillatory non gaussian stochastic system how do we deal with this lot of conundrums uncertainties paradoxes how do we neutralize all those things that's what i call is artificial engineering intelligence artificial engineering intelligence is not equal to artificial general intelligence it is not equal to artificial intelligence it has the physics embedded in the brain so that <clears throat> proper decision can be taken hyper time compression we have lot of data and also we have extreme convergence if we want to deal with in real time we have to do it a much faster rate and also it is a digital ai mesh artificial intelligence embedded into that which i call the virtually opto satisfied governed by physics and data what is opto satisfied we want to do an optimal condition automation has to happen before op uh, uh, optimization has to happen before automation the industry is moving towards that optimization has to happen but we deal with a lot of uncertainties as i said how do we deal with these conundrums paradoxes so we have to move on to the first level of opto satisfied condition before reaching an optimal solution in an uh, tactical environment so what is the opto satisfied it is a combination of different words satisfying is a combination of two words satisfying and suffising that will result satisfying so you don't need to get an optimal solution if you are satisfied and it is adequate for the condition in which we are operating that is satisfied but is it enough for our condition is it enough for our industry is it enough for our well that we need to check because we have to have some level of optimization so that i call opto satisfied you don't need to have a complete optimized solution but if they are satisfied satisfied and adequate it should be okay as long as it is within that optimal range that becomes an opto satisfied satisfied the word is introduced by herman and simon then i thought that is not a condition that we need to use it it may be good enough for uh, facebook good enough for e google for searching but it is not good enough for our industry that we need to have an opto satisfied condition now i will tell you uh, the details right now say if you go to if you think of a decision made not on based on optimal condition but it is satisfactory and adequate for the current circumstances when made based on close enough and good enough and within the optimal range then it becomes the opto satisfies condition for the operation i will show you a video so when you look at on data analytics lot of uh, uh, meta heuristic models have uh, taken into place now uh, making inroads to come up with an opto satisfies to solution quick enough good enough and the optimal enough for the operation so that is the level that we need to take before the complete tactical autonomous system now i'll take you through a video you watch this video very carefully there are two groups of pen queen
it's a small video you have to watch very carefully i will replay with my comments what has happened now that's the same video the main important objective is passing the information between the two groups one is coming from the sea the other one is going to the war and you will see some are not participating right there is a good enough condition the constraint is time they have to quickly pass on the information and there are some suffice results now some are convergent some are divergent but ultimately it is the opto satisfied solution that group has reached within the given time of constraint can we model it mathematically yes can we use it before automation yes that is a quick solution that will be the stepping stone to plagiarize the driller's brain that is an important one so traditionally we try to find out the global maximum or global minima and exactly we wanted to use it that yes we need that but before that with all these uncertainties as we deal we need to start with an opto satisfied the solution that you can see here now switching gears what all these things involve what to drive the educational transformation what is needed for the students you can see the industrial revolution right mechanization of steam mass production industrial revolution 3 computing and photon industrial iot cyber physical systems so we can logically and chronologically we can document it and find out but fundamentally there is a change happen it is not on its own right it is a combination of technologies within that industrial revolution that made a well defined industrial revolution if you take steam iron chips pc internet auto- automation ai nanotechnology additive manufacture these are all the technologies that are providing a foundation for this clearly demarcated industrial revolution 4.0 but another thing we have to see educational pipeline is important because the transformation of the new workforce is important but have you aligned with that education has not all the time there is a big gap between this and it, the gap is widening in the industrial revolution 4.0 yes academy is trying to catch up trying to change but it has to be fast enough otherwise in the blink of an eye we will be in the industrial revolution 5.0 where we are talking about singularity so that is important that i wanted to emphasize it is the coupled transformation and also integrated transformation with that i finally i would like to give few concluding thoughts always remember this simple equation very simple equation but it is a powerful equation exponential growth is equal to exponential technology to the power exponential thinking you can have all the exponential technologies but if you don't have the exponential thinking of using it you will fall flat trying to catch up with the simulation of technology maybe a fast follower or a slow follower right either way you are going with a flow as i said only dead fish will go with the flow the fundamental idea is you have to have the technology as well as the transformation through the thinking yeah i sh- i'll show you a- welcome to the future 
a final video. Advanced technology has revolutionized the drilling process with robotics, automation, artificial intelligence, and deep cognitive science. Robotics have completely replaced the human element on the rig, making up the drill strength, maintaining equipment, and even making dynamic adjustments of drilling speed and direction have been automated, controlling errors, optimizing uncertainty, and eliminating safety hazards. And the evolution of the role of the driller and the auto driller has followed the advancement of technology on the rig. Initially serving in an advisory role based on data models, artificial intelligence progressed into a supervisory role in full control of the rig, and then into one that is completely autonomic, self-configuring, self-adapting, and self-learning, determining, adapting, and implementing its own optimized drilling programs, increasing recovery, and gaining access to previously unviable resources. This intelligence can be greater than the compiled human encyclopedia of drilling knowledge, with the added benefit of fast and accurate insight thanks to AI. Human drillers can operate modern rigs that are in remote parts of the world from the comfort of a digital command center thousands of miles away. And with a robust cyber drilling system, operations can be run 24 hours a day with unmatched efficiency. This may seem like it's a long way from the current drilling process that still relies heavily on manual labor-intensive processes. But this is no distant future. This is a future that begins now. It is not a pipe dream. It is not a futuristic. It is happening now. Autonomics, relearning, self-learning, self-correcting, self-healing, self-diagnostic system that we can make everything in the palm of our hands. That is happening now. With that, uh, I'd like to conclude uh, my talk uh, and I would be happy to answer uh, any question you may have. Thank you, boss. Uh, back to you. Thank you, Doctor, for this brilliant uh, lecture. It was amazing. So uh, if anyone has a question, can, uh, can raise a hand. Hi, Dr. Ahmed Jarrah. This is uh, Ahmed Jarrah, technical sales consultant for Landmark Iraq. Thank you, I, and we appreciate to bring this is digital era to the audience here in Iraq. And uh, my question, how we can uh, convince the customer here in Iraq to the DWO and DWP while we are uh, using that uh, 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 turnkey contract for all that uh, drilling uh, contracts? Do you hear me? Yes, uh, your voice uh, is clear. Uh, doctor, uh, you are muted. Hello? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. So now the DWO, now we have uh, the real-time solutions where we can get the feed from the rig and analyze the broomstick and other things. So the initial one is uh, uh, we can do a proof of concept, right? So then 
uh, get that solution in front of the customers so that they can see the value, right? So we can talk about all these things. It is beyond PowerPoint. When you see the DWP is on the planning phase and DWO becomes an operation, now the real-time connectivity where you can make it on the go, that makes it much useful. So it may be fast delay, right? In some of the shale wells, we built 20,000 in six days. It may not be the same in Iraq. A lot of stuck pipe problems. Where we have the solutions? I'm developing a pack of models. I don't want to predict stuck pipe, but I would like to find out the health of the problem beforehand. The pack off leads to the problem, right? The, the arteries get blocked, similar to pack off before the heart attack, before the stuck pipe. So we are trying to come up with the solutions that we can do it only in real time not just monitoring 10 uh, monitors and do it, it is not possible. We can do it, but the machines can do much faster rate of uh, correlating these multiple variables. Uh, so now to your original question, how do we convince? We can do a proof of concept on the real time and once they get convinced, automatically it becomes a reality. Ahmed? Hope that answers your question. Thanks, Doctor. Thanks. Appreciate your time and clarification. Many thanks. Not all the technologies. Uh, so now, remote operations in a remote rig, connectivity is a problem. That's why we are doing it on the rig with appliance, LEA, right? Uh, now, if we have connectivity, we can take it to the cloud and monitor it in an expensive environment like uh, offshore, where we can afford to do that. So we have to take it uh, depending on uh, the type of wealth that we do and uh, the cost. Even if you reduce some of the stuck pipe problems, I think uh, Iraq is famous for a lot of uh, stuck pipe issues, uh, especially on the uh, North Iraq. So that may be of more valuable taking a particular pain point and solve it through the DWO, then take it further. Uh, thank you, doctor. I think there is uh, a question uh, in the comments. Uh, Lester say, says, uh, how does data science and uh, machine learning supports the AE, uh, AEL at, uh, as it uh, relates to drilling engineering? Yeah, it's, uh, that's a good, good question. Uh, now, uh, as I said, we are not automating an inventory in Walmart or a Facebook or a, some uh, flat data-based companies, right? we deal with a lot of uncertainties. So the data science alone cannot solve the issue. Data science doesn't know physics. When we do the physics, like well plan, well engineering software, we have a lot of assumptions. So we have to start with the physics without violating the laws and come up with some solutions, but it may be bounded because of the assumptions. Now, data science is a black box model, which I call the, the physics-based model as a gray, uh, gray box, black box and gray box. When you combine uh, white box physics, and if you combine, you come up with a gray box model. So that will be a more powerful than purely using physics, than using uh, data science. We can use 80% physics, 20% uh, machine learning, then try to come up with a best solution because the data will provide information in real time, which can be used to train the model of physics and suppress some of the assumptions. So we have a better predictive model. So now we deal with drilling engineering, right? We don't call drilling science. Well, engineering, 
When it comes to well science, then it becomes a science, right? Now we have to combine well engineering and science so that we have a better predictive model. For that, it is much easier. I, I, I'll give you an example. So when you're walking on a roadway, you just see a stone coming in front of you. What do you do? Immediately you react because you wanted to protect. So the speed at, at which it is coming, the projectile, you calculate and try to move, try to find out, is the brain processing everything? Not really, it has been found that the eye filters the data and pass on to the brain to do the high level engineering processing. Then sends the signal to all the places you move or run away, all these things. So that's the power of data science plus engineering. That's the same way that we need to approach. Pure data science is just a glorified regressional fit. You give the data, you will fit it. The more data, you better fit it. Can you do it in a single well? That's where the artificial engineering intelligence come into play or the drilling engineering intelligence come into play. Hope that uh, answers your uh, question. Um, yes, yeah. I think uh, okay. there is uh, um, another comment says, uh, would you consider uh, MPD managed pressure uh, drilling? Uh, the new IoT? Yeah, the manager pressure drilling is not uh, used everywhere, right? It's on selective basis, which is of uh, cost effective and depleted reservoirs and other things. And now, NPDs are already, they have controls and set points to set and adjust the bottom hole pressure as the well is drilled to communicate. Now it is becoming more advanced uh, in uh, automating the system between the surface and the down hole so that we can have a better control, not only that, but also uh, faster delay. Yes, MPD is, uh, uh, but the targeted things are uh, when the industry moves on to the factory type drilling where we have repetitive jobs, that can be automated, right? We cannot go and automate everything. When it has reached a mature point that it needs a repetitive action, then you reach that automation level. Otherwise, uh, uh, it is a slow process. Now, initially, when you uh, look at the industry, when the data science, machine learning, everything came, they all, the data scientists, everything, oh, we don't need the domain expertise, we'll solve it. It doesn't, as I said, we are not using some Google data to find out to the search, uh, but we deal with a lot of things which we don't know still. Right? So the same way that uh, we have uh, advanced in MPD's operations, uh, but it has not been to the level that you can completely uh, do it on its own. Okay, thank you, Dr. Samuel, for these clear uh, answers. I think we reached the, we reached the end of uh, our lecture. Thanks for your uh, time with us, and thanks for your comment. Um, dear attendees, uh, thanks uh, for your listening. Have a good time. Thank you, Dr. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It is a pleasure. Uh, you have a good future. Uh, do all uh, all the best you can and try to come up uh, uh, with a different uh, perspective. The last one is try to think of providing a non-traditional solution for our own old traditional problems. Thank you. All Thank the best. You, yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you, Victor. Thank you.